Chelsea G from the Local Experiment, the man that I listen to on the radio, and he has a I, face. I know. <laughs> it's and he's, real. It is real, and he's here in Rochester. I know. And we are happy to have you here. I have been a sustaining member of the current Thank for. You. I don't know how many years, not a founder, but certainly no, once I found it, fell in love and had to help it out. So I want to know, what is it like being in Rochester and having a 10th anniversary? Like it's that? always special for me, Chelsea. Um, I love telling this on the air, so I might as well tell you guys that my uh, first date with my wife uh, 14 years ago was to come down to Rochester and see her show at the Rochester Art Center because she's a ceramic artist. Um, and we've been together ever since, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. So Rochester has a very sweet spot in my heart. Oh, I've never and heard that story. So, so I always okay. love to come down here. So Park to Rochester. Exactly. <laughs> and to be honest, the Rochester Posse was something I started saying early on when All we right. came on 10 years ago, and okay. people picked up on it, and uh, people like being part of it. And, uh, so we always have to do something special for the Rochester Posse whenever we're celebrating anything and uh, this is a big celebration for us 10 years we never even thought we'd be around for 10 years it's nuts i mean i've never done anything for 10 years before so um we needed to do something special for rochester and that's why i'm here and the dogry is awesome they just opened and they're big fans of the station and they got zest catering to come in which is out of control and third uh third street brew house as well so Something that, you know, we don't talk about a lot on the air, but it's important for us to build a community. That it's not just a music station. Being public radio, we've got to build a community. So to have the idea of these, like, three uh, independent uh, companies coming together to help us have an event in Rochester is totally what the station is all about. It's what we set out to do. So it's really huge. And Jose James is a perfect player to have because he kind of crosses all these boundaries, you know? He's like celebrating Billie Holiday. He's jazz, yeah. but he comes from a rock and indie kind of tradition. And, and look, you're getting me excited because I know. we got the, the press passes from Curious Snores. Thank you <laughs> to cool. go and check it out. Um, so thank you so much, Mark, for being here. Yeah, thanks for being a part a of the community and, and being a part of the local experiment now. Thanks for, our, uh, exactly, the local experiment. It's uh, yeah. kind of like what we're all about. And yes. uh, keep up the good work. And uh, it's the Rochester Posse. Rochester Posse, the current, now do become a staying member. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> Ten years and going strong. Ten years, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Coming down, everyone. This has been a super success. We couldn't do it without you. There'd be no point in putting these things off if we didn't have no one show up. And you guys all showed up, and it's off the hook. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I gotta come up with some words, but I gotta soak this all in because it was beyond anything I was expecting. Thank so you. thank you. And I want to know, um, what was it like being in Rochester? What was your experience here? Mm. Well, you know, I'm, I'm from Minneapolis, so I know the vibe of Minnesota, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I haven't been here for a while, and so it was kind of like, okay, remembering just the culture, you know, how people are, Absolutely. how people talk. Um, I live in New York now, so people are not as overtly friendly. So that always surprises me when people are like, hey, how are you? And I'm like, what? You know, I don't remember that yeah, anymore. Yeah, like this Minnesota nice smile. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, it's, <laughs> you still gotta it's do. really good. It's really good, you know. Um, my bass player's from Kansas City, too, so we have like a Midwestern vibe okay. in the band. 
Um, and it's been great. Everybody's been super nice. Beautiful hall. Got to hang out with the uh, people from The Current. Absolutely, you know, is, yeah. That's such an important... 10th anniversary, which yeah, is phenomenal. Yeah, station. And, yeah. You know, just there's been so many changes since I grew up, you know, in what the, in the 80s, in the Twin Cities. You know, it's really... It's a different place. You know, Minnesota's a different place in, in a lot of ways. So it's really interesting to come back and sort of feel the, the changes. Absolutely. Yeah. And tonight what you did is um, you took from Billie Holiday's library, and I want to know what, what kind of inspired that or made you want to take that on. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm not a kind of person who wants to do um, just like some tribute to like make money or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. This is, this is her uh, centennial. And she shares the same birth year with Edith Piaf and Frank Sinatra. So there was something, a hundred years ago, something happening that year. Actually, Edith Piaf and Frank Sinatra, I think, were born like seven days apart. It's really interesting, like three of the world's greatest singers are all uh, celebrating a hundred years. And I just felt like, in, in some ways, even to this day, Billie Holiday remains underappreciated. Not necessarily for her jazz singing. I think everybody's like, okay, her, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald. You know, it's a very short list mm -hmm. of like the top five. Not really Cole, you yeah. Know? Um, but there are other things that are, are, I think, important, especially now, about her work and her legacy. Um, you know, she was a feminist. She was very progressive um, socially and about gender and sexuality. Uh, she obviously was an activist mm -hmm. against racism, against prejudice, and she was very outspoken. I mean, and, and the thing that I try to kind of make people understand is she was Beyonce of her time. Yeah, that's actually good. You know, she was the that, highest yeah. paid black female entertainer in the world. Oh, like, she was making astronomical money. Yeah. And for her to record Strange Fruit which her record label uh, completely did not want her to do, was a huge thing, you know, a really big deal. Um, and the impact from that was immense. And then not only to record it, but to go downtown, because back then, black singers would sing in Harlem, white singers would sing downtown. She sang at the Cafe Society, which was the first integrated club in uh, New York, in the village. So it was like this really, you know, way before the 60s and the mm -hmm. Cultural Revolution, this was like really early. Um, and although, although meanwhile, like reinventing the American popular songbook night after night. So for me, you know, I can't, I could go on and on and on about the Gabe, <laughs> but... Um, Please do, I'm actually feeling quite... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I just, I also thought it'd be quite interesting for a, a man to interpret a female artist. I feel like that doesn't happen too often, especially It really jazz. doesn't. That, that's kind of what uh, surprised me about it or hit a chord with me in a different way, maybe as a woman too or something. Just yeah. to, to feel that you, I don't know, it, it took, how do I, I'm trying to find the right words for it, but you didn't take it and make it a man's song. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like you kept it hers. Yeah. But that's right. And that because was, it's that powerful. Was, yeah, it's know? powerful. That was beautiful to me. Thank you. So, and your last song was humbling incredibly humbling yeah i mean it's it's crazy man you know just what's happening right now like i mean i used to live in london and so i have a slightly different perspective now i'm obviously an american mm -hmm. but living somewhere else just makes you kind of shift your perspective and watching the news every day about the place you live from another culture's perspective is very interesting yeah you know? i actually was lived in costa rica and yeah that when obama was coming up and like seeing there yeah right? it does it's totally different it's totally different and i mean just you know my drummer is from london and he's just like when all this stuff was happening with mike brown and ferguson and he called me like what is i don't even understand he's like what's going on and i was just like trying to explain it and he just doesn't get it on a fundamental level because you know for everything we say about europe and it has its you know, problems, obviously. Of course. That does not happen, you know, not every day, not every week, not, not really ever. Very rarely. So it's like, it's a good time to just kind of remember uh, the role that jazz played in social protest in the 60s, too. 
Max Roach and Charles Mingus in the 50s. And, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a deep thing. So for me, it just feels like timely. And I'm sort of glad that I'm not out singing my kind of like normal Jose James. Mm-hmm. Let's get down, <laughs> you know, like yeah. having a good time tonight. And I mean, I love that, but it's just not what I'm really feeling in my heart right now. I kind of feel like these are heavy times. I want to remember some powerful things and, and remember a powerful woman as well. Well, I'm going to tell you on an honest note of being just, you know, obviously I'm Caucasian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I felt a moment of truly being able to understand and accept in a way that I didn't feel capable of before. Mm-hmm. So thank you, thank you for that. And that was a strong moment mm-hmm. and really beautiful. So thank you so much. And happy anniversary, The Current. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome.